Hello and welcome. Now in this course, we're going to be working through a practical example of how you set up Google Analytics for a digital product. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the data metrics that you can actually view and measure throughout the entire process. We're then going to talk about some of the characteristics of setting up a digital product in order to be measured using Google Analytics. And then we're going to move on to a squeeze page setup. And then we're going to talk about how you measure the results. We're then going to move on to the split testing of a squeeze page setup and then how to measure the results of your split test. We're then going to move to your sales page setup. And then we're going to talk about how to measure what's on your sales page or the results you're going to get. We're then going to talk about the split testing of that sales page and then how to measure the results of your split test. We're then going to move on to the upsell page and then we're going to talk about what to measure when you're talking about your upsell page. And then we're also going to talk about the success page and we're going to talk about what to measure on that success page. Finally, we're going to talk about basic reports that you can then set up, advanced reports you can set up, and then we're going to talk about some automation that you can set up so that you can determine what is happening on your site. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in the first video. Hello and welcome. Now, in this video, we're going to go a little deeper into the definitions of what you see on the left side menu so that you'll know exactly what you're looking at as you begin to set up your Google Analytics for your sales system. Now, one of the first things you're going to see on the left side menu is going to be the audience, and that's after all of the real-time information. And the audience is who is actually visiting your site and what do you know about them. It also includes the number of views that the content actually gets. So basically, it's everything about who actually is interacting with your site. Now, if you go further, you'll notice that there is a link called acquisition. An acquisition is a term that describes how people are getting to your site. Do they get to your site through being advertised to? Do they come through search? Do they come through social media? Acquisition is all about how someone actually gets to your site. Then there's the behavior tab. The behavior tab is basically describing what users are doing when they're on your site. So how do they get to the pages they get to? How do they behave? How long do they stay? This tells us all about what it is that they're doing. Now, conversions matter if we actually set up goals. If we set up goals where we're trying to track when someone actually completes a task or completes a process on our site, we will then have conversions because we would have designated that ahead of time with Google Analytics. So conversions tells us, are we meeting our goals? Are the visitors actually getting and doing the things that we desire them to do? Now, inside of the audience overview, you're going to notice that there is a segment called New Sessions. And New Sessions is a description of an estimate of the first time visits for our users. And Google Analytics tracks the percentage of new visitors versus returning visitors. So we have lots of new traffic to our site. This can be a good thing. But we want a mix of people coming to our site. We want people who are so engaged with our brand, so engaged with our products that they are actually coming back. So we want to measure over time whether or not the number of people that are coming to our site are new versus returning. And then there's the term users. And users indicates someone that has actually visited the site at least one session during the period that we are actually outlining. And what we want to see is we want to see those users converted into customers, but we also want to track over time whether or not that number is rising or falling, and then we'll do more analysis to figure out whether we are converting them or not. Now, these metrics are the beginning point of understanding what you're looking at when you begin to place the code on your websites and you begin to track the activity. Now, in the next video, we'll go further into some of the side menus to describe some of the functions you see inside of Google Analytics. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video.
Welcome back. Now we're going to take a look at some other metrics that we should be measuring most of the time when we're looking at our Google Analytics data. And pages per session is an indication of the average number of pages that a person looks at every time that they're on our site. So if we're trying to increase the number of pages or if we have things for sale on other pages, this is an indication that we are enticing people to take other steps to look at some of our other pages. And if we're not improving, we need to continually make steps to give people links to click, content to view, so that they'll take those other steps to move to our other pages. Now another section on this particular page, which is the audience overview, is the average session duration. And this is the amount of time that someone spends on all of our site. So it's not just one page, it's the time they spend on multiple pages before they exit out of our site for that session. And again, depending on what our goals are, it could be a goal that we want them to spend time or it could be that we want them to come and buy and then move on. But we basically have a measure for us to look at to tell are people staying around our site? Are they looking at other pages? And how much time do they spend on average? Now to look at the other measures, we're actually going to go to the behavior tab here on the left side menu. We're going to click the overview. Now page views is just a raw number. It is the number of times someone views a page on our site. If someone views a page more than once in a particular session, then that will count toward page views. So this is a measure, but we have to remember that you could have someone who is actually viewing one page in particular twice. Now unique page views is different. This actually measures one page view per page per session. So if a user comes back to a particular page over and over again within a session, that will not be counted in this measure. So the unique page views are always going to be smaller than page views, especially if you have viewers who are looking at multiple pages or they have pages that they're looking at multiple times. Now what we're going to have is we're going to have some data in this area when you're actually collecting. And this will give you those individual pages where people are spending the most time, where you're getting the most page views. And you're going to want to take a look at this number because this will tell you where people are spending their time when they're on our site. Now there's also a measure in behavior called average time on page. And this number is measured on a page by page basis. So again, this is a different measure. And if we want to know if we're keeping people on a particular page, this measure will actually tell us. Of course, then there is the bounce rate. And the bounce rate is basically described as this. A user comes to our site, they land on a page, and then they leave from that very same page. So in other words, they bounced off the page. And so it is an indication that for whatever reason, that person did not stay on that site or it didn't entice them to go to other pages on our site. The exit percentage will tell us how often someone leaves our site from a particular page. So again, this will give us an indication on a specific page that someone is finding that they can leave from this page. Now, depending on what your business model is, it could be that someone is supposed to leave from a particular page, but you have content or you're engaging people or you're starting to add content to some of the pages where people are exiting. You want to be able to measure that over time. So you now have 14 measures that you can actually use and look at repeatedly. Now this will not stop you from creating custom reports and looking at more detail, but these 14 things are things that you can keep track of that'll help you to determine what's happening on your site. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we're gonna be discussing setting up your digital product for sale on your website. Now you'll notice that we are inside of WordPress and in order to have a site where we're going to actually account for the traffic to the sales pages, opt-in pages, we want to try to keep all of our pages on one site and consistent. So if you have a, so if you don't have a plugin you're using, all you'll need to do is to install a plugin that is going to work site-wide in your WordPress website. Now there are other ways for you to be able to sell your digital product using Google Analytics. You can actually use sites like 
conversely, or leadpages.net. What's important about both of these platforms is that you'll need to go the extra step of associating these platforms with an actual website. That way you'll be able to track your funnels as well as your traffic. Another way to track the process is to use a page builder like Optimize Press or InstaBuilder that will actually build out your pages within your WordPress website. That way, all you'll really need to do is to place the code at the top of your website or to use the tracking section, which will allow you to track your pages site-wide. So for the sake of this course, we're going to create pages on one website. We're going to track our Google Analytics site-wide using an analytics and tracking function. And we're going to do that inside of Optimize Press. Now, you can actually do this inside of your page builder in the very same way. You want to make sure that your tracking code is tracking site-wide in your page builder for your website. And you will create your pages as you normally would using your page builder. And you will make sure that you are able to get the URLs appropriately. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, in order to set up a squeeze page system, we're going to need to create three pages. We're going to need to create an opt-in page, a thank you page, and then a final landing page. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a dummy opt-in page, and we're going to just use an existing template, and we're going to create the page. Now, when we create this box, we're going to be required to put a thank you page in here, and that's actually a wise choice because as soon as the person opts in, what we want to do is we want to encourage them to go and check their email so they can finish the process. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a thank you page URL. And we'll use an existing template. And then we'll create the page. So we have a check your email now. What we're going to do is we're just going to publish this page. And then we're going to take the URL and we're going to put it back inside of the page that we just looked at. So we're now going to place that thank you page inside of this dialog box so that whenever the person actually makes contact with us, they put their name and email address into our box, then they're going to be shown a page telling them to go and check their email. We're going to go ahead and save this. Now there's one more page that we need to create, and that is the page where they're actually going to get their content. So we're going to create a download page. We're going to use an existing template. And we're going to create our page. And once our download is then ready, we'll set it up on this page. Now once again, we are using Optimize Press for the sake of simplicity. You will use the page builder that you use typically as long as it is associated with a site-wide Google Analytics code. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to get the URL to this page. Now the reason this page is important is because the person that's actually opted in will not get access to this page until they've completed the process. So this is where they get the content. This is also where they land when they complete the process. And it's likely that they're only going to land there once. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this URL and now we are ready then to look to Google Analytics. And we're now going to go to our admin area. We get there, we're going to go to the goals area. And we're now going to define a new goal. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an acquisition goal, which is an account creation goal. And we're now going to click continue. And basically, we're saying that if a person reaches this destination, they will have completed the goals. We're going to call this goal opt-in. And then we're going to click continue. What we're going to do now is that we're going to actually place this page inside of our Google Analytics so that when the person reaches this page, they will be counted and the goal will have been reached. Now we're not doing value, we're not doing funnel, so now what we can do is we can click save. And so we have now set up our squeeze page system with Optimize Press. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in order to measure whether or not we are successful in growing our email list at increasing rates, we're going to take a look at the conversions menu.
And where we're going to track our goals, we're going to click Goals. And then we're going to click Overview. Once we get to that page, what you're going to notice is that there are two areas. There is the Goal Completion Location. And this is going to show you where each page resulted in a goal completion. So where someone lands on an opt-in page and then they decide to complete the process, it'll show up in this goal completion location. And you're going to get the statistics on how the page is doing and you'll be able to watch that page over time. Of course, you'll be able to trace the page and how well it's doing with custom dates. Now, right now, you don't see any data because this is a new goal. But whenever you set your goal and your traffic is running, you'll be able to come back to the overview page of the goals page within the conversions to check the goal completion location to find out how your page is doing. You will find out the total number of opt-ins for the period. You'll find out how many people are leaving the process before they finish the opt-in and you'll get a goal conversion rate based on the page that they have landed on. Now again, all of this works because we have placed our Google Analytics code at the very top of our website and is tracking our entire site. So any place where the person lands and ends up completing the goal, it's actually going to track that and place it here inside of Google Analytics. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to set up for a split test of the squeeze page. And in order to do that, we're going to come to our home page and we're going to come to the behavior tab. And you're going to see that there's a link there called experiments. Now, one thing you're going to note is that there is a new plugin called Google Optimize. Now, this is fairly intricate to install. And as of the recording of this video, Creating experiments is still available. However, Google does say that the analytics content experiments will be depreciated, which means they will not be supported. For now, we can actually create an experiment very simply by using this button. We're going to give this test a title and we're going to select a metric and the metric is going to be obviously our goal. And we're going to determine the percentage of traffic to be sent to the experiment. So we're going to consider sending 50% of the traffic to our experiment. We do want to be notified of any important changes. And now we're going to click next step. So what we're going to do here is we're going to first place the web page that we are actually sending traffic to for the opt-in. And then we're going to create a variant page, which is the one that we are comparing to. So we'll need to have created a second opt-in page that's going to be directing people to the same location. Okay, so now we've got two opt-in pages and one is a test page and the other one is our original page. And now we can click next step. So what we're going to do here is we're going to manually insert this code. And we're going to install this code where we are running the experiment. So in Optimize Press, we're just going to add in a new box here. We're going to move it up to the top. We're going to set it up for the header and we're going to put our code in. Once our code has been entered, we're then going to click update. And now we can click next step. And our experiment is ready to go. You'll notice that Google has already told us that our experiment code has been found, our analytics code has been found, and our experiment is now ready to go. When we click Start Experiment, we can then start sending traffic to start measuring whether or not one opt-in page is going to do better than another. So with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to measure the results of the split test. And we do that by going to the home page and then by going to the behavior tab, scrolling down to find the experiments, clicking that link. And what you're going to notice is that your experiments will be running in this area. You'll then want to click on the experiment that you want the results for. And then you're going to get page specific information about this test. 
all of your information is going to show up in this area, including the conversion rate. You do have the option of exporting this content to a PDF if you need to report to someone, a client or a customer. So basically the bottom panel is going to show you the variant and how it's performing, how it's converting, and whether or not it is likely to outperform the original page. So you'll have information at a glance as to how well your page is doing and whether or not you should make changes. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to set up a sales page so that we can track the results on Google Analytics. So we're going to go to the page area and create a new page. And we're just going to create a test sales page. And we're just going to publish and save this page. So our sales page is now ready. We also need a thank you page that also will serve as a download page. So we're going to go ahead and create that page also. Now, one thing to note about a sales page, much depends on your checkout process. So for example, if your checkout process takes someone to a thank you page first, and they're actually going to get a download page by email, you'll want to take note of that. If they're going to be sent to a download page, and that's the only page that they're going to be sent to, you're going to want to take note of that before you actually start looking at how to structure your Google Analytics. So now that we have our sales pages in place, we're going to go to the goals section, and we're going to create a new goal. And we're going to work with the existing template that someone makes a payment as the goal. We're going to click continue, and then we're going to give this goal a name, and we're going to make this a destination goal. We're going to click continue, and now we're going to put in the web page URL of the one landing page that people have to go to. So in this particular case, you're going to want to take note of again, whether or not the checkout process takes them to the download page or the thank you page. So whichever one is most relevant, you want to put that one in this goal area. Once you've done that, you're going to click save. And now you actually have your second goal available, which is sales made. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now, before we talk about measurement of your sales page activity on Google Analytics, we are going to want to go back into our sales made, and we're going to want to edit the goal details. Now, one of the things that you'll notice here is that we can actually set a value to being able to come to this download page. Now, in some cases, you'll have to be careful with this. It may or may not be fully accurate if, for some reason, someone comes to the page and they are actually double counted. However, what we're going to do is we're actually going to set this value at the price that we're actually going to be charging for this product. And then we're going to click Save. And this is actually going to help us to measure as we look at data. So to measure, we're going to go to the home page, and we're then going to go to the Conversions tab. When we go to the conversions tab, we're actually going to click goals. And then we're going to click goal overview. And what you'll notice is that all of the goals are being linked together. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to set this so that we can look at just the sales made. And then you'll notice that we have a set of statistics that only reflect our sales process. So the path from the sales page to the thank you page is actually going to be in this area, the goal completion location. We also have sales made, which is a raw amount. We have the dollar amount. We have the conversion rate. And then we have the number of people who abandoned the sales page before they actually made it to make a purchase. So all of this information is going to be relevant for us as we analyze what's happening with our sales page and the path to actually making a purchase. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to set up a split test for our sales page. And in order to do that, we are going to go to our home page. And when we get there, we're going to go to the behavior tab. We're going to scroll down and then we're going to click experiments. 
Now we are going to use the create experiment button and we'll click this and open it. And we're going to give our experiment a name. We're going to select our goal and our goal is going to be sales made. And then we're going to determine how much traffic is going to go to the experiment page. And we're going to make that 50%. We're going to turn on the email notification for important changes. And in this particular case, we're going to take a look at the advanced options. Now what we want is we want the traffic to be distributed evenly. So if there are two visitors for the original page, we want two for the variant. What happens if you don't click this is the traffic is determined dynamically. So we're actually going to turn this on. We're also going to set a minimum amount of time for the experiment to run. We're actually going to set it for three days. Now, when you set a confidence threshold, the higher you set the threshold, the more confident you can be in the result. If we were to take this drop down menu and we were to set this at 99.5, this is what we would need in terms of confidence before Google Analytics declared that there was a definite winner in terms of which sales page is converting better. Once you have those things, you can then click next step. So now we're going to configure our experiment and we're going to put the original sales page in one of the dialog boxes and we're going to put the variant in the other dialog box. Now, if we like, we can actually rename these internally for our purposes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click next step. So now Google Analytics is going to give us a code that we are to insert manually. So we're going to copy this entire code. And we're going to put this in the header tag of the original page. And so we're going to place the code in the header tag. And then we're going to click update. We're then going to publish the page. And now our page is then ready in order to conduct the experiment. So we're now going to go back to Google Analytics and we're then going to click next step. Once our code then says validate, we can then click start experiment and then Google will tell us that our experiment has then launched. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to track and analyze the data from our split test of the sales page. In order to do that, we are actually going to go to the home page. We're then going to go to the behavior tab, and then we're going to go to the experiments section. We get to the experiment section. You're actually going to see that there is a sales page test. You're going to click inside of that test, and you should start to see some things that are familiar based on what we did with the experiment of the squeeze page. You'll see the variant section at the bottom. You'll see that there is a conversion, a conversion rate, and a comparison to the original, as well as a probability of outperforming the original, and all of the data available in this page. You'll also see that you can actually export your data into a PDF, and that you have control over the experiment on this page. Now, of course, it's important that we monitor the experiment but we did set up a fail safe in that we are going to be emailed if there are going to be any major changes in what happens with this data. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, this video, we are going to set up an upsell on Google Analytics. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create another sales page and another download page. And in order to expedite things, we're just going to clone two pages and call them upsell sales page and upsell download page. So we now have an upsell page and we now have an upsell sales page. So now we are going to go to Google Analytics. Now the first thing we're going to do is to reconfigure our goal. So we're going to go into the admin area and we're going to go into the goal area. And now what we're going to do is click new goal. Now we are still going to go with the pre-made template of making a payment and then we're going to click continue. And what we're going to do is we're just going to call this an upsell and 
we're going to create a new destination. And then we'll click continue. We're now going to write in our new download page. We're going to write in a value. And this time we are actually going to turn on the funnel for our goal. So we're now going to write in the required steps for the goal. And we'll determine which of the steps are going to be required. We'll consider that the intermediate step or the upsell sales page is going to be a required step. And then on to the upsell download page. We have everything in our funnel. We're then going to click save. So we have now set up our upsell page for Google Analytics. Now in the next video, we'll take a look at how you're going to measure performance of this funnel. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now to analyze the data for the upsell, you're going to go to your home page, and then you're going to go to the conversion section, and then you're going to click on goals, and then you're going to click on overview. Once you do that, you can actually switch the drop down menu specifically to goal number three. I'll show you all of the data that you want to see regarding the upsell. Now, obviously, we are going to want to find out when people are abandoning the process before they actually get to purchase the upsell. And so really in order to do that, we do need to set up a multi-step process, which we will actually do in the next two videos. But now you've seen how to set up your upsell, how to track it as if you were tracking any of the other goals, and to watch specifically the statistics for that level of content. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now that we have all of our pages set up, we want to be able to answer a question. If someone were to opt in to our page, how many of those people would actually become buyers? How many of them would actually become buyers of the upsell? And we want to be able to look at Google Analytics to answer that question. And so we're going to do that and we're going to set it up in Google Analytics right now. So we're going to start with the goals page. And what we're going to do is we are going to click create a new goal. We're going to work with the make a payment template. Now, because we want to know how many people are going to make it all the way through the funnel, we're actually going to place the upsell download page in the destination. Now, we can put in a value for the upsell. And what we want to do now is turn on the funnel. And we want to place the steps in on the way to actually getting to the end of the funnel. Now, in this case, we've determined that success is going to be that when the person has opted in, they're going to be taken directly to the sales page. So we're going to have that set up in our funnel. And then if they purchase the product, they're going to be taken immediately to the upsell page. And then they would be taken to the goal destination. So if someone made it all the way through all three steps, we want to find out how many of those people were those that actually opted in to our page. So once we have all the steps there, we're actually going to click save. And we have now set up a success funnel that we want to be able to track the data to find out if people that are opting in are also completing the entire funnel. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to discuss evaluating the success of our funnel. And in order to do that, we're going to go back to our home page, and then we're going to go to the conversions link. We're then going to click on the goals, and then we are going to look at the funnel visualization link. Now, currently, there is no data because the goals were just set. However, as your funnel begins to get traffic, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to see a visualization of what is happening in your funnel. And at every stage, you'll be able to evaluate 
what's happening and where people may or may not be dropping off. Now, one aspect of your funnel visualization that also exists in some of the other reporting screens is that you can actually go to the intelligence link. And when you have a funnel, this is a good place for you to be able to ask questions about what is happening in your funnel. For example, in the intelligence area, Google says you can ask basic questions, you can check performance, and you can chart trends. So you can ask any of these questions in the following form in the intelligence area to get answers on what is happening in your funnel. Now at any point in time, if you want to find out what is happening with any of the other goals, all you'll need to do is to hit this drop down arrow and you'll be able to look at exact data on the opt-in level as well as the sales made level. So basically, in order to make sense of the goal funnel, you'll need to decide on what success looks like for reaching the end of the funnel. If you determine that it is reaching the first download page, you'll need to designate that as your goal. If you determine it's reaching the second download page, you'll need to use that as your goal. But again, you will be able to visualize where people are making decisions so that you will be able to make changes that fit your business. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now, once you have defined your funnel, you will then want to set up some basic reports to make it easy for you to get the information that you want when you want it. And so to do that, we're actually going to go to the customization link and we're going to go to the custom reports. And we're going to set up some basic reports to get information on our goals. To do that, we're going to click new custom report. We're going to give our report a title. To do that, we're just going to have one report tab and we're going to use the explore type report. Now we are going to add several metrics. Now we're going to call this metric group, our goals group. And then we're going to add metrics. And we're going to add in our goal conversion. We'll scroll down. And what we want to know is whether or not we're reaching our value. So we'll determine this by doing our upsell. We can come back. We can come back again. And we can continue to add metrics to add to our basic report. Now, once we have all the information that we're going to want in our report, we'll need to add a dimension. And typically, one of the easiest dimensions to add, along with any goal-related report, will be the date. So if you go to the time menu and you pick the date, you'll then have a complete report. If you were to try to add something without having a dimension, what would happen is that Google would tell you that you still need to have at least one dimension. So we're going to add in the dimension of time. And we'll also do a date index. And once you do that, you are then going to determine which view or account you want to look at. We're going to look at one account, and it is the one that's already selected. So we're going to have one view selected, and then we're going to click Save. And that's going to bring us to a page that actually brings up our report. Now, if we want to save that report, what we're going to do is we're going to click Save. And when we save this report, that means we'll be able to come back and reuse it when we come back to the site while changing the date parameters to give us the information that we want. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And we should now have a basic saved report. And in order to check that, what we're going to do is we're going to click the Save Reports link. And you'll see now that we have our Are We Hitting Our Numbers daily report. So if we want to view it, we can just view it. And we can bring it back on our dashboard in this way. So that's how you would create a basic report in order to show the information, save that report so that you'll be able to reuse it any particular day and get the information that you want.
Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we are going to do a few more reports, but we're going to do some more advanced reports. And to do that, we're actually going to import some from the solutions gallery. And we are now inside of our custom report area. So we're going to click import from gallery. What will happen is the gallery will open up into a window. And what we can do is we can actually search the gallery for some of the reports that we may want based on parameters that we place in. Or we can actually import some of the more popular reporting. And so in this particular case, we see that there are three very popular reports, Occam's Razor, New Google Analytics User Starter Bundle, and Content Analysis Dashboard. So we're going to import the first of these, and then we're going to select the view. And in this particular case, we are going to stick with the search traffic and all traffic sources as well as the digital dashboard. Now we're going to click Create. And so now we can actually look at some of the reports that we have here. In particular, we can start by looking at search traffic. So as you can see here, what will happen is that when we look at these reports, the dashboard will open up and we can decide whether or not we want to create a saved report with this information or not. For example, we may look at an all traffic report that's telling us where all of our traffic is coming from. Once again, this may be a report that we want to save. So we might go ahead and click save and then click OK. That means then that this report is going to be reusable anytime we want to get it in our save reports area. We can go back to the gallery and we can import the starter bundle, or we can actually input any other report that we want. For example, here's one, visit and goal conversion by traffic source. And so we can import this report. Now again, here's another report that we might save that tells us how we're acquiring our traffic. And of course, we can change the date if we need to, or even the way that it's rendered by week or month. And what we're going to do is we're going to save this report also. So one of the ways that you work with advanced reports is that you can import them into your data, run the report, and save it and use it as your saved report. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now, Google Analytics no longer sends out custom reports automatically. And so you'll need to find other ways to monitor what's happening in your online properties. However, there are custom alerts and custom alerts will give you the opportunity to get an email or a text message telling you when certain events have happened in your online web properties. Now, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to the customization area and then you'll want to click custom alerts. Then you'll click manage custom alerts then you'll click new alert. Now, of course, you are going to pick a new alert for the particular web property that you're working with. However, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of the kind of alert that you want to set up. You can set a particular day, week or month for the period, and then you can actually set up an alert based on the goals that you have already set up for your site. So in this particular case, We've already set up some goals and we can make it so that we're contacted when we're meeting those goals in a certain way. So for example, if we decide to name an alert goal reach opt-in on a particular day. So we want to be alerted on a particular day when we reach a certain goal, we're going to have ourselves to be emailed. We can also set up our mobile device. Now what we're going to do with our goals in particular is we are going to set our alert conditions based on our goals. And so we can make a determination that when our sales made are greater than a certain percentage, increased by a certain percentage or increase on a percentage basis, then we can have ourselves an alert sent. And this in some ways is even more convenient than having a report sent. 
So let's say that what we want to do is we want to determine that the sales value for a particular day is above $270 that we want to have an alert sent to us. And then we have one alert. We can actually set multiple alerts. So we can actually set a new alert based on another goal that we have. So if we pick one of our goals, this time we can determine that we want to have an opt-in goal and we want to be alerted when the conversion rate increases by more than 1% compared to the same day last week. Now again, what you're doing is you're basically creating custom alerts in the form of a report when you actually get the results. So as you start to grow into looking at your data on an everyday basis, you will then start to determine what you want to be alerted by and have Google Analytics automate the sending of this report. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. You've now seen Google Analytics applied on a very practical level. We've now set up your opt-in page, sales pages, and your thank you or success pages. And we've also given you a set of metrics you can look at when you're analyzing the effects of the traffic that's coming to those pages. We've gone into detail on how you can set up split tests so you can begin to apply them to all of your offers. Now, the most important factor to remember is how you get the code onto your page. Now, remember that if you choose to use HTML pages or websites, you'll make sure that you need to place the code on all of your pages. Now, if you choose to use a page building system not associated with your site, you'll need to notate it correctly as well as the HTML code if you decide to measure the effect of a funnel. Now, with this practical example you've been given, you're now ready to undertake Google Analytics and even go beyond what's been presented by finding more advanced features. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you either in another video or in another course.